Hey guys, my Loveless here, and I'm going to teach you guys a little about the rulers that are in Paint Tool, Tool, Paint Tool Side 2. Yeah, words. Um, and a little bit of what I know about them. If you guys know a little bit more, you guys can add in the comments, help people out. But today, I'm just going to show you what they are, how to move them around, and we just explain a little bit what they do. So. If you hit Control R, you'll get the last ruler you use. Um, but there is a tab up here by selection. I'm not sure if you can see it on my screen, but on the top of where like File, Edit, Canvas, Layer, La, 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 there is a spot that says Rulers. The first one on the list should be the straight ruler. Um, this one here, they, they pretty much tell you exactly what they do, but. This one here is literally a straight ruler. It'll give you straight lines no matter what. If you hold shift, um, not shift, if you hold control right here in the center, you can move it around your canvas. And if you hold control and you have it out, you can flip it any direction you'd like. So anyone who needs, straight ruler can go ahead and use them um just so you know the spot that you actually draw on is a very small light shade of green area so it might be massive because i'm really close to the screen um but you can see right here next to where the actual um brush is at that's where your lines will be. So keep that in mind when you're actually doing your lines. You're not going to get get at any other spot. So there's that. Let's continue on to the next one. Uh, the next one's an ellipse. And it's literally a circle. It does, all the rulers do take in consideration to um, how hard you put your brush down. You know the brush sensitivity. So if you're planning to do a nice thick lined one you can the same thing with this one if you hold control you can move it around your screen um, you can also hold shift for this one to resize it and then hold control again to move it and so I'll do part like so you can see so there's that and if you actually hold control to these corners with the anchors, this will deform your circles around. Just like that. So you can get a different angle. Move it down so you can see. Nice thick lined one. See? There we go. So that's what this one does. And if you go, oh well, I didn't really want, you know, my circle to be like this. I kind of want it back. In the same tab where the rulers are, you can actually hit reset ruler and it'll go straight back to the circle or whatever ruler you're using to its default. So off to the next one, we have parallel lines. So this one here will give you a ruler like the ones that is straight line, but instead it'll give it for the whole entire um, canvas. So wherever you stick this, you can make a line going straight, like down and holding control, you can move it. So it'll go wherever you'd like in that direction of lines, but it'll constantly stay straight. So that's super helpful if you're doing stuff like, oh, I don't know, fences or even blinds. You know, imagination can take you anywhere with that. But like I said, you can go in there and reset this ruler. It'll go back to being straight horizontally there. Next we have um, con uh, concentric ellipse. This one's super useful. It gives you an inner working of the circle from the original. So 
You can start super small and just work your way out, work your way in. It doesn't matter. It makes for the entire canvas. You can do the same thing as we did last time where you hold shift, you can move up, down, holding control moves it all the way around. Um, also, it does give the ability to do free form on this one as well. So you can do stuff like planet rings. <laughs> which is a lot of fun. This little guy's gonna have a nice big ring. Holding shift, I can resize it, move it in here. So that's cool. Gives you a lot of things you can do for smaller details and such for that and keep it consistent. So, clearing this, I'm going to uh, reset that one so it stays same we have a vanishing point this one i have found that you can't move the vanishing point um if you guys have figured it out oh never mind today it worked some days my thing doesn't work and it looks like the reason why it didn't work for me last time is because you can't move it if you're not completely on it so you have to keep the white crisscross um arrows on top of it if you want to move your vanishing point um it took me a while to figure that out because apparently I'm slow. But yeah. So even though it tells you that you have crisscross, you actually have to be on top of it. So that's really finicky, but it moves. That was a problem I was having before. So now we learned that together. So you can move your vanishing point and this will stick straight to that dot wherever you'd like your vanishing point to be. So you can go to each corner here and it'll go straight back to it. So depending on what you want to draw for your vanishing point, you can make it your own. And this is a great way to do it. They did give you new rulers for perspectives um, in the layers tab. I will go through them. I don't use them often, but I will show you. So that way you have other options than that. All right, so those are all the rulers. Let me reset this one. All right, so there's that. We're gonna turn those off, which is the same thing, control R. We'll turn it on, turn it off. On the side here, by the layers, Pinto Sai has a new perspective ruler thing that if you never used the program, it's not completely new, but if it's new to you, it's new. <laughs> so you have your normal layer, your line work layer, your folder, and you should have right next to that is perspective rulers. So this one gives you all types of perspectives. So I don't use these often, but it's just like the other ruler where you can, wherever the line is connected, it will pretty much stay on that spot and it'll draw a solid line all the way through. And let me see, number two is the same way. You can move these anchors depending on how you like your perspective. Make sure your crisscross lines are where they're at, wherever you want to adjust the, the entirety of your perspective grid tool. But there's these anchors and you can move them so you can change how this perspective looks. So if you're doing floors from high above, this is super useful because then you can go in and draw, you know, where you'd like your lines. I know that's not super helpful since I did so much before. And it kind of guides you where it's going to be depending on where your line is. So there's that. So that's number two. We've got number three. Same goes with this. You can move your anchors and it will change your perspective. So if I want these to be exactly on this part of the canvas, I can't have that exactly that part of the canvas. The middle line can move the entire thing. And here's your other perspective areas. Then you can go and it would be anchored to the points you have given and you can just make your lines from there. As you can see.
I don't personally use this a lot, but you know, for those who need it, it can be really useful. So that's that one. That's three. Um, there's two. BP. This one's more of a grid. Grid. You can make bigger or smaller by holding shift on the anchors. Um, using control, you can skew it. So this can be helpful if you're doing walls. So here we go. Let's say I want a wall right here. And then I'll add another one. Oops. So there's that one. And we'll have this one over here. So now I have those. Start with this one up, you know. And that'll be good for me to add those in, you know, later on. So those, that's that one. And then the last one gives you more abilities to do things with these anchors. You can hold control. This will move these spots along. So it's more of a pyramid than anything else. Almost like a camera shot. If you've ever had a 3D um, classes, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's coned like one where it has this, but here, now this one's a box. More like a cube. It has all the perspective pieces, and that's would help you out immensely for whatever you need. And this one does have snaps, so it will literally snap to that area. You have it up here on the top here. Like I said, I don't think you can see this on my screen, but it has um, different vanishing point detections and it has snaps. So it will go on the lines this and snap on the ones on the grid, or you can have it just free. F you can free line it by hitting the line um, thing. So this one will do it automatically for you if you just hit whatever line that is here. So that's what that one will do. So, and that's the perspective grids. Like I said before, and I'll say it again, I don't personally use them a lot. So there's probably more information about them somewhere else, but I do use the other rulers um, for a lot of my work. So I hope that helps you out. If you found this helpful, just uh, leave me a like, you know, comment below if you want to see something else. I will try to figure out some other ones to do for you guys uh, later on. Have a good day.